In this video, I'd like to talk about the weak form problem statement. So this is a way of restating the classical problem that appears in continuum mechanics. And the classical statement that appears in continuum mechanics is all usually called the strong form problem statement. And let me just review that first. So we, we start with the body B with some body forces, little b applied to it. And then on part of the boundary, we have applied tractions, t hat, so that's on S2. And then we have applied displacements on a part of the boundary, which we call u hat. So u hat is applied to S1, so those are displacements. And we have tractions. And the formal statement of the problem, the strong form statement, says that what we want to do is find a vector value found vector valued field u such that u is equal to u hat on s1 where the divergence of the stress plus the body forces is equal to zero and that those stresses are symmetric and that the stresses acting on the normal vector on s2 are equal to t hat and further that the stresses are a function of the strain and the strain is simply the symmetric gradient of the displacement field u. So I'm, I'm going to look at this in the classical small deformation setting here. So this is the strong form statement of the problem. And in, if it's linear elasticity, this function is just simply the rank for elastic modulus c acting on epsilon. So that would be linear elasticity there. Now, the weak form statement of the problem is actually equivalent to the principle of virtual power applied to the situation where the domain in the principle of virtual power P is equal to the entire body B. And we consider the special case where the virtual velocities U tilde are equal to zero on S1, the part of the boundary where the displacements are known. So that actually generates the weak form statement. And so, let me go ahead and, and write that all out. So in the principle of virtual power, we have the integral over the body of the stresses double contracted with the virtual strain rate, so epsilon tilde. And we have our external virtual power term. So we have the body forces dotted with the virtual velocity. And then we have the integral of the tractions dotted with the virtual velocity integrated over the entire surface. Now, our entire surface is composed of S1 and S2, but on S1, U tilde is equal to zero, so we only pick up an integral over S2. So there's just a slight change here when we look at uh, this special case here that we've considered, where U tilde is equal to zero on S1. And so now this, the weak form statement is as follows. Find u such that u is equal to u hat on S1, where this expression that we just wrote out for the principal virtual power, so the integral of sigma double contracted with the virtual strain rate field, plus the body forces dotted with the virtual velocity field, plus the imposed tractions t hat dotted with the virtual velocity field all integrated over their respective domains uh, for any or all virtual velocity fields u tilde, 0 and s1. And notice that in this expression here, u is hiding, the displacement field is hiding because sigma is a function of the strain, which is a function of u. So when we say find u such that u equals u hat on s1, where this statement here has to hold, for all u tilde, the u is hiding in there in that relationship via the constitutive law for sigma. And if you had linear elasticity, that would just say C, the elastic modulus, the, the fourth order modulus tensor, acting on the symmetric part of the displacement gradient. Uh, just a bit of terminology here also. Um, when we have virtual velocity fields that are zero on the part of the boundary where the displacements are imposed, we call those admissible virtual velocities. So virtual velocity is just any field, u tilde, defined over the body, but an admissible 
virtual velocity field has this special property that it's zero on the part of the boundary where the displacements are specified. So that's just nomenclature, and that's an arbitrary assumption, and we're allowed to make that since the principle of virtual power holds for all virtual velocity fields. So the ones that we consider in the weak form statement of the problem are ones that have this special property. Uh, and let me point out also that this way of stating the boundary value problem uh, is really the basis of the all-important finite element method. It actually works off solving the, the balance problem by actually solving this weak form statement of the problem. Uh, one other uh, bit of terminology I want to sort of bring up is that I've been talking about virtual velocities and virtual power. Uh, sometimes you see people refer to virtual displacements and virtual work. Uh, those are all synonyms for each other. So if I say virtual velocity or I say virtual displacement, those mean the same thing. If I say virtual power, that means the same thing as virtual work. Uh, these are just definitions or terminology because everything is just built off this arbitrary field, U tilde, and it was my decision to call it a velocity as opposed to a displacement. And if I call it a velocity, then the units of the terms are power-like, so we talk about virtual power. If I called it a displacement, then the units would end up being work, so we would talk about virtual work then in that case. Okay, now there's, there's a little bit more notational convention that you should be uh, familiar with. Quite often, instead of writing that u tilde or epsilon tilde, people write del u and del epsilon. So del u and del epsilon are used to indicate virtual motions and the symmetric gradient of those virtual motions. So that's a, that's a very common notation that one sees. Uh, another notation that one sees for writing down this integral equation that appears in the weak form statement is the following. People will define a functional g, so it takes arguments of the displacement field and the virtual velocity field, and it just brings all the terms to one side. So we have basically in this first integral is the internal virtual power minus the external virtual power. So the statement then for the uh, weak form would be one that says that g needs to be equal to zero. So I can write the whole weak form out here by saying find u in the set s, where the set s is all the functions that are equal to u hat on s1, such that g is equal to zero for all virtual velocity fields in the set v, where the set v is all functions where the virtual velocity field is zero on s1. So that's just another way of writing down the weak form problem statement for the continuum mechanic boundary value problem for finding the displacements in a deformable body. Uh, the set S has a name, it's called the space of trial solutions, so the function you're looking for, the displacement field, has to be in the set S because the set S includes every function that satisfies the displacement boundary conditions. And the set V is called the space of admissible test functions, uh, and sometimes it's also called the space of admissible virtual displacements or the space of admissible virtual velocities. So those are all synonyms for each other. The, the finite element method itself, the way it works, is by approximating these spaces. So instead of considering spaces of all the functions that are u hat on S1 and all the functions that are zero on S1, it only considers a subset of those functions. And that's actually the way in which one is able to take this relatively complex looking version of the statement of the boundary value problem and make it uh, completely tractable.